Nothing is higher than Mao Tsumeru. You evaluate yourself and others. You have your status and they have theirs. Sumeru is a Sanskrit word which means wonderfully high. It is wonderful because no one knows just how high it is. Arrogance and pride, notions of self and other are like Mount Sumeru. The analogies are to teach you to see Amitabha Buddha within your own self-nature and to recognize the imperfections there as well. And Devin thoughts are the ocean water. Are you afflicted? Your Devin thoughts are the salty ocean water and your afflictions are the waves. Small waves do not cause much damage, but big waves may rise tens of feet high and sink ships. How many ships lie on the bottom of the sea? No one knows. The ships were invited as guests of the Dragon King and escorted to the sea's bottom by the big waves. Just so, big afflictions smother the brilliant wisdom of your self-nature. Take care not to have affliction waves. Cruelty is an evil dragon. Cruelty, the wicked Dragon King sends a wave to swamp your ship and bring you to his palace for a feast and some dragon wine. Empty phones needs is ghosts and spirits. You say, I don't believe in ghosts and spirits. If they exist, why have I never seen one? They are empty and phones. How could you see one? If you try to catch a ghost, you cannot grab him. You may see what appears to be a physical shape. Wouldn't you reach out to grab it? He remains right where he was. He is just a shadow, empty and false. He is not actually there. I will tell you about ghosts and spirits. Ghosts are black because they belong to the yin. Spirits are white because they belong to the yang. You may see them, but you cannot touch them. They are empty and false. Defilement is fish and turtles. Weariness of sense objects is represented by fish and turtles. I have explained sutras for you for a long time, and I have never told you that greed and hatred are hell. It is not that greed and hatred are hell, but thoughts of greed and hatred will certainly send you to hell. You plant the seeds of hell now with thoughts of greed and hatred and in the future, you will descend into the house. Delusion is animals. When I explain sutras, I sometimes say, that person is as stupid as a pig. Some people say pigs are intelligent. They eat and sleep, and they don't do any work. These people think that not doing anything is intelligent. Such people would like to be pigs. As soon as they eat, they go to sleep, and when they wake up, they eat again. When the time comes, they are slaughtered for food. Animals are stupid, stupid, and yet, as meaningless as their lives are, they still wish to live. When you kill a pig, he screams, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. He begs for his life, but you don't understand his language. What a pity. If you understood, you might be merciful and spare him. Sutra, good knowing advisors, always practice the ten good practices, and the heavens can easily be reached. Get rid of others and self, and Mount Sumeru topples. Do away with Devon thought, and the ocean waters dry up. Without defilements, the waves cease, and cruelty, and there are no fish or dragons. The Satagata of the Enlightened Nature is on your own mind cloud, emitting a great bright light which outwardly illuminates and purifies the six gates and breaks through the six desire heavens. Inwardly, it illuminates the self-nature and casts out the three poisons. The health and all such offenses are destroyed at once. Inwardly and outwardly, there is bright penetration. This is no different from the West, but if you do not cultivate, how can you go there? Commentary. Previously, I spoke about the small waves, which represent the subtle thought process which takes place in the mind. You are unaware of these thought waves, but they are present nonetheless. The big waves represent big afflictions, 
and the small waves, the extremely subtle ignorance within your mind which runs in a current like waves on water. Are you ignorant or not? With ignorance comes greed, hatred, and stupidity. You are greedy because ignorance serenizes you. It says, I want that thing. Go get it for me. And the greedy mind goes and gets it. Beauty and wealth. If he doesn't get them, he flies into a rage. Like one of my disciples who says, I must have my way. Why isn't everything just the way I want it? Ignorance, anger, waves. Small waves are not important, but big waves may get you an invitation to the dragon's party. Don't be cruel. Don't hurt people. Don't be a venomous dragon. If you end cruelty, the fish and turtles and dragons disappear. Your enlightened nature is the Tathagata. When you give rise to the light of great wisdom, it outwardly illuminates the and purifies the six gates so that the eye sees forms but is not turned by them, the ear hears sounds but is not turned by them, the nose smells sense but is not turned by them, the tongue tastes but is not turned by tastes, the body feels but is not turned by feeling, and the mind perceives dramas but makes them disappear. The bright light of wisdom breaks through the six desire heavens. The heaven of four kings, the heaven of thirty-three, the Suyama heaven, the Tushita heaven, the Nima Narati heaven, and Varanimita Vashavati heaven. When the eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind are purified, you have broken through the six desire heavens. The causes, the seeds of the six desire heavens are planted within your six organs. If you are fond of beauty, you may be reborn in a heaven of beautiful goddesses. Turned by sounds, you may be born in a heaven where you listen to music all day long, much finer music than what is made by your guitars and mandolins. The smells in this world are so nice. You say, certainly the smells in the heavens are even nicer and you are reborn in the heaven full of good smells. When your nose is not turned by smells, you smash that is our heaven and so forth for the remaining five organs. You ask, when the desire heavens are destroyed, is the earth destroyed as well? And this space itself disappears, how much the more so the earth? But where will I live? You can live in emptiness, and you need not return. That is the very best way. When you turn the light around and reverse the illumination, when you investigate and awaken to the Sadagata of the enlightened nature, when the three poisons are wiped away and the offenses of the hells are destroyed, at this moment you are enlightened and understand that the nature of offenses is fundamentally empty. But unless you destroy ignorance, your offenses are not removed. Inwardly and outwardly, there is bright penetration. This is no different from the West. Inside and out, there is bright light. Inside and out, there are no obstacles. The three evil destinies and the three obstacles exist no longer. And their absence of the Western paradise for this reason we do not need to move the Western Paradise to the Buddhist lecture hall, and we do not need to consult a travel agent for passports and visas. The Western Paradise is right here, but if you do not cultivate, how can you go there? Then it is very far away. It takes several days just to go to the moon. The Western Paradise is 10 billion Buddha lands away, millions of times farther than the moon. Then how do you go there? You purify your mind. Sutra. On hearing this speech, the members of the Great Assembly clearly saw their own natures. They bowed together and exclaimed, This is indeed good. May all living beings of the Dharma realm who have heard this awaken at once and understand. The Master said, Good knowing advisors, if you wish to cultivate, you may do so at home. 
you need not be in a monastery. If you live at home and practice, you are like the person of the East whose mind is good. If you dwell in a monastery but do not cultivate, you are like the person of the West whose mind is evil. Merely purify your mind, that is the West, of your self-nature. Commentary Fundamentally, your own bodies are the Western paradise. The assembly exclaimed, but we did not understand because we did not know how to use them. Those present in the assembly saw their nature. Really good, they exclaimed. We have never before heard such wonderful Buddha drama. Inconceivable. May all who hear it become enlightened immediately and certified to the fruit. The sixth patriarch had made himself manifest in a layman's body in order to speak the drama. After his enlightenment, he did not leave home, but went to live with hunters for 15 years instead. During that time, he cultivated and worked hard, so he said that it is not necessary to be in a monastery to cultivate the way. Sutra, the Honorable Way, asked further, How should those at home cultivate? Please instruct us. The Master said, I have composed a mock list verse for the Great Assembly. Merely rely on it to cultivate and you will be as if always by my side. If you cut your hair and leave home but do not cultivate, it will be no benefit in pursuing the way. The verse runs, the mind meets straight, why toy following rules, the practice sure of what use is dhyana meditation. Filial deeds support the father and mother, right conduct is in harmony with those above and below. Difference, the honored and the lowly in accord with each other. Patience, the rumors of the evils of the crowd. If drilling wood can spin smoke into fire, a red petaled lotus can surely spring from mud. Good medicine is bitter to the taste. Words hard against the ear must be good advice. Correcting failings gives birth to wisdom. Guarded errors expose a petty mind. Persist daily in just benevolent deeds. Charity is not the means to attain the way. Search out body only in the mind. Why turn outside in search of the profound? Just as you hear these words, so practice. Heaven then appears right before your eyes. Commentary. The way must be walked. If you do not walk it, how is it the way? Virtue must be cultivated. If you do not cultivate it, how is it virtual? The straight mind is without greed, hatred, and stupidity. Precepts are designed to protect you from these three poisons. But if your mind is straight, what function do the precepts serve? The straight mind has no waves, no ignorance, and does not need to talk at holding the precepts. The straight mind is shun. Shun is used to rid you of your forms. Someone says, the sutra says, why toil at following rules, so I won't hold the precepts. Is that person's mind straight or not? He doesn't care whether or not his mind is straight and his conduct sure. He just cares about not having to follow any rules. If his mind is not straight, how can he not hold precepts? If he continues to be selfish, greedy, habit right ridden, envious, and obstructive, how can his mind be straight? Your parents gave birth to you. You should repay their kindness by being filial and good to them. The honored and the lowly, the master and the servant should be courteous and polite to each other. What is patience? Refusing to speak of the shortcomings of others, not slandering, not being jealous or obstructive, all that is patience. Do not say, this man is evil. I saw him shoplifting. The incident never occurred, but the rumor spreads. He took the precepts and then went out drinking. It never happened, but someone started talking. Do not discuss people's bad points. Bring up their good points. The impatient person never speaks of the good, only of the bad. 
If you have no bad points, the impatient person will create them for you. In China, about 4,000 years ago, wood drills were used to make fire. Wood was drilled and drilled until the fire fed up. If wood can make fire and the mud can grow the red lotus, then it is not absolutely necessary to leave home in order to cultivate. If you cut off your desire while still at home, you can have a success. One who criticizes you is your good knowing advisor. Just as bitter medicine cures your disease, the critics' words may be unpleasant, but they are sound advice. Do not be lazy, says the teacher. Do not go sleep. The student says, all you ever do is watch over me. Americans in particular respond that way because they are so remarkably independent. They don't listen to anyone's advice. They want to be unsurpassed and supremely honored. Right or wrong, they say, I listen only to myself. I don't care what anybody says. I may turn into a sandless block of wood, but nonetheless, I'm going to stand on my own principles. I understand Americans. I don't like to hear words which are hard against the ear. Correcting feelings gives rise to wisdom. If you do not change your phones, you are stupid. That need not be discussed in detail. Guarded errors expose a petty mind. If you indulgently cherish your problems and make excuses, saying, no, you don't understand, there were extenuating circumstances. It wasn't that way at all. I had to do it, you see. You become your own lawyer and argue your defense with flashy, flashy rhetoric. I have many such disciples. They think that I am stupid and that they can deceive me. What do you are supposed do what you are supposed to do every day? Be just and benevolent, always benefiting others. But do not say, I gave $100,000 I have bought Buddhahood. Charity is not the means to attain the way. You have to cultivate by searching out body only in the mind, not outside. Although we have been discussing the Western paradise, the verse refers to the Christian heaven as well. Heaven is not just in heaven. Heaven is right before your eyes. Sutra, the master continued, Good knowing advisors, you in this assembly should cultivate according to this verse to see and make contact with your self-nature and to realize the Buddha way directly. The Dharma does not wait. The assembly may now disperse. I shall now return to Tsao Tzu. If you have questions, come quickly and ask. At that time, magistrate way, the officials and the good men and faithful women of the assembly all attained understanding, faithfully accepted, honored the teaching, and practiced it. Commentary How did the pupil in the assembly attain understanding? Don't pay attention to them. You must find a way to understand for yourself and leave it at that.